Hi, my name is Clint Bohati. This is Necromold's Monster Battles. And tonight I'm joined by Kenny Murphy, who's the co-designer of the brand new Necromold's expansion, Necromold's Call to Arms. And we are gonna do a full playthrough of the Call to Arms expansion tonight. Uh, but before we do, Kenny, I wanna know, what is your favorite part of the new expansion? Uh, I think my favorite part has to be the new artifacts. Uh, being able to equip them on your monsters and throw them into battle is a lot of fun. How about you? Uh, I think my favorite part is the wound mechanic, which, um, which is a, a brand new thing in this expansion. And essentially what it does is it lets you take back some of the pain of your loss when your monsters smash and potentially retaliate by taking a tiny little sword and sticking it into your enemy monster, which actually weakens the monster in its future combats. So it's a whole lot of fun, and it actually adds a whole new level of strategy on top of combat in Necromolds, and I'm sure we'll see plenty of that in tonight's playtest. Definitely. So one of the new components in the expansion is the Necrocaster board, which is really the player board, and it's the character that you're playing as in the game. Um, and it gives you uh, a few very unique abilities that only your character can do, and a last stand ability that gets activated when your champion gets smashed on the battlefield. And tonight I'm playing as Igneous, who's the stone father of the quarry, and all these characters come with a bit of lore in the Necromold's lore book. Um, we also start with a soul card. Uh, mine is the Soul Reaper, is the name of the card that I, I am using tonight. And that gives me, basically it, it defines what happens when I roll this symbol, this little soul symbol on this champion die, which you'll see, which you'll see more of during the game. Um, and then finally, there's the artifact that goes along with the soul that you choose. So the Soul Reaper comes with the Crystal Sword, which I've got right here. And the Crystal Sword uh, has its own unique abilities that get used by the unit that's equipped with the Crystal Sword during the game. Um, so, Kenny, who are you playing as? I'm playing as Netch of the Gravestone Fellowship. Uh, he's got a lot of interactions with wounds, uh, both putting them on himself and or putting them on other friendly units or other enemies. Um, so we should see a lot of wounds kind of flying around. Um, in addition to that, as my soul card, I have the Forsaken Seer, uh, so, which kind of pairs well with Netch, since the Forsaken Seer can heal wounds off of some of uh, friendly units. So I can kind of shift wounds around as I see fit uh, on the battlefield. Cool. Oh, go ahead. Uh, in addition, uh, the Forsaken Seer comes with the Fortune's Hairpin, uh, which lets me just reroll any die uh, in any combat situation. So uh, it's a very versatile artifact to have. Um, it does deal a wound, but since we have so many other interactions with wounds, I'm really not too worried about it. So. And one cool thing between these two characters is Netch and Igneous are actually um, real rivals in the lore of Necromolds. Netch is actually responsible for the death of Igneous's predecessor, who was the previous stone father of the quarry, named Stratolkus. So it makes sense that these two would really be butting heads on the battlefield. Hmm. We've got our, our Necrocasters, and a little bit of this was probably part of setup that we kind of skipped ahead on, but we've got our Necrocasters, we've got our Soul card, and our Artifact card, and we've also already picked out what monsters we're gonna be playing as mm -hmm. uh, tonight. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're gonna, just gonna make our units, and then we'll jump into a battle. I know that we, we decided we were gonna play with these three terrain pieces, mm -hmm. um, but I think what we should do is we can go ahead and let's, let's roll our combat dice like we normally would mm -hmm. and see who gets to kind of maneuver and we can kind of place these three. So maybe we'll even set them sure. right off to the back here. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So we roll, we're looking for hits. I had a terrible roll. Uh, All right. Well, marginally better. I had one hit and you had two, so two. you um, get to go ahead and pick the first terrain piece and place it somewhere on the board. Hmm, okay. So I kind of want to slow your insectomites down, so I want to make walls. So we'll pick up the wall. Just put it right in front of you. Man, I might just put, I want to move this somewhere. I might put it just right back here. Okay. N normally I might hover it a little more towards the middle, but I'm thinking just for our camera angles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to do a lot of playing on the back end of the board. Yeah. Um, all right, you have an altar to place. Mm -hmm. I think I, for the same reason, want to just throw this on your half. 
kind of see if I can force you down into an alley here. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then, um, and then I believe since you um, got to place most of the train pieces, mm -hmm. um, you actually have to technically deploy first in right. the advanced rules. So go ahead and place your units how you'd like, and then I'll arrange mine, and then we're almost ready to go. Okay. And I think, I think part of the finishing your deployment will also be um, choosing your commander. Yes. Yeah, so that's a pretty important decision here. Uh, I have made exactly one Ankerpora, mm. and we'll find out why that's significant pretty soon, I think. But I'm going to make that Ankerpora my commander. Yeah, there we go. And I will do so by sticking this banner in it, just like that. And I think that's about the configuration I want right there. All right. Um, let's see, who do I want to put on officer to you? I think I want to do, and of course, one important aspect of this is that the units support each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to want to keep, I'm going to want to keep my bats by my insectomites. Um, and then I've got two grave ghouls. I think I might throw my grave ghouls over here. And then I get my bat in the wings. Yeah, I think we go like this. And then we'll go bat and insectomite. And so when you're deploying your army in necromolds, they have to be touching the green border on the edge of the map. Um, and otherwise, they can deploy kind of as far apart or as close together as you want. Oh, I've got kind of a smaller army. Um, Interesting. Yeah, certainly more dense. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll see if that helps me or hurts me. Um, yeah. So I'm going to assign my champion by sticking him with this banner, and that means that these abilities get to go through that character during the game, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, but it's an important decision because you kind of want your champion to be somewhat mobile. Um, and Batadactyls are really fast, but they're more squishy. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, I feel like I need to... I need to go with a bat just because of that mobility. Mm -hmm. But the risk is that my batadactyls are just more squishy, so the odds of the odds of my last stand being activated are, are pretty high. Um, and of course, so in Necromolds, the goal of the game is to have there's two goals in Necromolds with the expansion. Um, so you want to have either the last monster standing on the map or with the expansion. Um, you want to destroy your enemy's champion twice. The first time you destroy their champion activates their last stand ability, which kind of has its own unique effect. And then the second time you destroy their champion in the game, that completely destroys their army and they lose. So the expansion adds an all-new win mechanic to the game. Um, so I've got him. Oh, and then also my artifact. Um, who Ooh. are you going to place your artifact in? Yes. Who will get this? So it does not need to be my... Champion, I can put this wherever I want in my army. Uh, and I kind of don't want to put it on my champion because I don't want a huge target on it. Um, I might stick it on one of my cigarettes. Mm, yeah. There you go. Get a nice little hairpin for you. I know. I don't know if Sigurath has much hair. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> he is ac Sigurath actually has more hair than any other Necromold, so it's appropriate that he have the hairpin. He's got yeah. more of a beard going on. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, and then I've got the, uh, the crystal sword, um, which we'll see during the game, but the crystal sword, that lets me, um, each gem symbol I roll, I can roll in an additional weak die. So for every one of these gem symbols I roll in my dice pool, I get to add a weak die and roll it into my dice pool. Um, so the crystal sword's pretty, pretty powerful. Um, and I'm going to, you know what, just because I know that this Batadactyl is probably going to see some combat. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and, and the Crystal Sword is melee and melee defense only. Um, so I can't, so it's not really going to be worthwhile on that dude. So um, I might, you know what? I am. I'm going to throw it on, a, I'm going to throw it on one of these Grave Ghouls. Hmm, okay. So you can see there my Grave Ghoul now has a Crystal Sword. And uh, 
if the Grave Ghoul gets smashed, the Crystal Sword just goes back to the card and then gets deployed at the start of the, uh, my next turn. So it won't go away forever. Um, all right, so I think we'll do that. And then that gives that character just a little more versatility if I want to go in for some melee. Um, all right, uh, how many units do you have? I have seven. And I've got two, four, six. All right, so because I have the smaller army, I will be going first. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll some command dice. All right. So let me move all this to the side. All right, so in Necromolds, you're rolling, and I'll just roll them right on my character card here. So in Necromolds, you roll your command dice at the start of each round. Look at that, I almost got the full set. Um, to do things like move, ranged attack, activate magic abilities, stuff like that. And then you assign those to your, um, to the backs of your spell books. So you're just gonna be, you'll see me just putting those in the back of my spell books to tell those monsters to do those things. All right, so yeah, where did, um, do you know where you're gonna assign your dice yet? Well, I do know that I wanna get everything off of the back of the board here. So I kinda wanna prioritize feet. I did get a wild side. Uh, the star symbol, so I'm able to flip that to feet uh, for someone else to use. Um, but beyond that, I don't want to share too much of my strategy. Hmm. But we'll see. I, I don't know. Think... What, what were you thinking? Let's see. So I think I definitely want... My insectomites are my slowest units, so I definitely want to get them starting to move mm -hmm. while I've got feet. So I definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, my bats are really fast, so I wonder if I hold off on my bat and I go, yeah, I guess I could do this. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, so I was originally thinking I might put this on Grave Ghoul, but I feel like I'm not going to be in range of anything yet. So I'm going to take my magic die that I have here and I'm just going to discard it um, for two gems. Yep. So I'll reach across there and grab a couple gems. Oh, and I, of course, forgot our starting gems. Or at least I didn't grab mine. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, so I should have four. Yep, four each. Because we have three books. All right. So we each have four starting gems, which those are based on the number of spell books you used in your army. And then um, I got two more gems from discarding that magic symbol, which I'll just keep up here. Um, cool. I think I'm all assigned. So I'll go ahead and so go I'm... first. Okay. And I'm going to, um, I'll start by moving um, my insectomites a close distance. So move him up and then this dude, I'm gonna start, well, hmm, I'm trying to decide if that's gonna take too long to get over to you. If I go around back, I'm gonna have to weep all the way over there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I might stick to that for now. Just see how. Well, he's not going to have. Yeah, I better. I better keep him closer to the commander. The bat. The bat. I can snake around, but my insectomite. I should probably keep a little closer to my commander. Um, and I am going to. Let's see. Yep, that's it. So, insectomite is moved. So I'll pull the die off the spell book. Okay. Uh, since you've resolved that spellbook, I will resolve one of mine. I will start with Sigaroth. Uh, I just have one movement here. That'll be a close move as well. Uh, so I will move all three of mine right down the middle. All right. And again, if you're listening to us talk about assigning to spellbooks or pulling dice off or anything like that, um, check out the short overview video, which will fill you in on all the kind of the base mechanics in Necromolds and the brand new expansion. Um, all right, anything left for Ziggurath? Uh, no, I do have the magic die on him, so he's flipped over to his defensive side for the round. Okay, cool, good to know. Um, I will do, so last I've got Grave Ghoul. Grave Ghoul is going to move a medium distance, so I've got two Grave Ghouls. Um, this one I'll move right up there, and mm -hmm. then this one I'll move right up there. Um, so I've got both Grave Ghouls moved up. Um, they do have a ranged attack, but nothing's in close distance. So I am done for the round. Okay. I am going to move my Veggie Toads. Um, 
So part of the strategy for having only one monster uh, of a particular type, uh, I'm able to use March to move it around. Uh, I don't need to assign uh, feet dice to, you know, to move them. So that's kind of what I'm taking advantage of here. I only have the one anchor Pora. It's kind of a waste to throw the one feet die on that. So uh, I'm going to issue a March command and I'm going to do so by reducing my power by one. Uh, and the reason I'm reducing it by one is because I'm issuing it on the commander itself, or the champion, rather. Um, and so he's, he only costs one to use that. Uh, so he's going to move himself a close distance. I'd like to move him more, but there is a limit on March. Only one mo once per monster per turn. Um, and so now I can actually activate my Veggie Toads normally. Uh, and they have a medium movement. So I am going to sneak a couple little fellows in the back here. Mm -hmm. Just keep you on your toes. And we're just going to... He's sliding right back here behind him. And then this one, I kind of want to keep him... He's kind of my support toad, right? So he's just going to... I'm not going to really measure. He's just going to stick back here. And stay abreast okay. of him. Yep. Uh, that's it. Uh, you said you had no more dice. Yeah. So then technically my anchor pora now resolves, but he has no targets because nothing is within medium range. Uh, so that will be the end of my round. Cool. All right. Um, so that is, that's the end of round one. Let's go ahead and, um, so at the end of each round, we gain a power back. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go from three power to four power. I'll go from two to three. And, uh, and then otherwise... I still have less units, so I'll still be going first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and roll roll my command dice. Right. Come on, give me something good. Hey, there we go. Not bad. Not bad. Hmm. I might be doing some discarding. Let's see. Actually, I can put this spell book here, and then it'll be in camera. All right, let's see. Um, so, who yeah. do I want to move? i got to go first. Um, I could. All right. So I'm going to discard my magic die to reroll two okay. of mine. Well, I really was looking for a feat. I got one at least, so I'll, I'll take it. Hmm. Okay. What do I want to do with this? I got some decent stuff going on here. Putting a move on an insectomite. I've got a move on Batadactyl, who's pretty fast. Um, I don't think anything is going to be range, but it does kind of just keep you back, um, or I could grab more gems. So, you know what, I'm actually going to put, I'll put a ranged attack on Batadactyl, and then for this round as well, I'm going to take that magic symbol and just use that to grab a couple more gems, because I know I'm going to be needing those. Mm, okay. Um, I'm going to be needing those in a bit. Um, so, I'll go first. I'm going to resolve, um, I'm going to spend a power to march. Um, so I'm spending a power to use one of my abilities. And in this expansion, how it works is each ability, the cost of using the ability, is all dependent on the distance of my champion. Sometimes I might call my commander by mistake, but my champion to the unit that I'm trying to do the ability to. So in this case, I want to use a march. And the insectomite that I want to march, ooh, that one's still out of a lot of range. The insectomite that I want to march is a close distance, which means it only costs me one power. If it was a medium distance, then it would cost me two power. And if it was a far distance, it would cost me three power to do that ability. Um, so I already spent down one power, and march lets me move um, a friendly target a close distance. So I'm going to go ahead and march that insectomite up a close distance, um, which I think I'm going to get him a little closer to my, yeah, I'll put him right there, a little closer to my grave ghouls. Um, so that was my march. And I can use my Necrocaster's abilities at any point during my turn. Um, so um, as long as it's my turn, you know, I, although I was resolving Insectomite and my champion is in my Batadactyl, I can use my Necrocaster ability on my turn while I'm resolving my 
insectomites. Um, so that was the free move. Then I still, ooh, this is kind of, now I'm getting kind of into some territory here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Looking right I don't down think the you're, barrel. I don't think you'll be there yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm move up just a little bit more here. Not a lot, just a little. <laughs> and then uh, I'm getting kind of nervous. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move this one a close distance there. And that is my insectomites. They're all done moving, so I'll take the die off. And over to you. All right. Hmm. So I kind of want to just jump on that insectomite as soon as I can. So I kind of want to see, am I going to be in range? If I were to march my toad, and then from there, attack. Oh, just short. Nope. I know. That's why I, I didn't want to move the insectomite oh, up too much, because I could, I, I could tell it was just like I was just getting in your <laughs> Yeah, you've played this zone. before, huh? <laughs> I know. Actually, I'm kind of nervous. We've been focusing so much on the Kickstarter that uh, we, you and I haven't played in a while. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm forgetting a few things. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see once things start getting smashed. Yeah. Hmm. I think we just need to jump in. Just give you too many targets to deal with that yeah. something's going to sneak through. You do have more units than me. So. Yeah. And then I have this. Well, we'll see if anything's going to happen. I see that you have uh, feet placed on your batidactyls and range so the uh the effective range of those things is <laughs> two-thirds of the board just about <laughs> so i'm kind of scared to push anything too far yeah they're gonna yeah. get smoked but that is one bat and this is gonna be two toads so i think i might just do that we'll start marching toads all right there we oh, go let's not hit that right so i'll just start moving let's just Get in there. Now, I don't want to be so close that you can melee me. Okay, yep, that's good. And you're pretty far away from your commander, so if you were to spend something to march up that Batadactyl, you would run out of power pretty quickly, I yeah, think. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty expensive. Oh, well, it'd be impossible, because he's too close. Yeah. Or too far, yep. At one point, we thought maybe like a home rule was anything beyond far would cost four power, which I'm not opposed to, because that's just such a cost. I mean, that would be... Yeah. <laughs> For that one ability, that that's a pretty high cost to pay. Yeah, you can only have five power at any given time, so that's pretty much all of it right there. Uh, uh, yeah, any other toads you want to move? Yeah, let's see. I, I think I want to just, yeah, like I said, I just want to throw them in here. All right, just right down the middle. All right. Uh, that will be it for the toads, so okay. on to you. Um, I've got bats left, um, so I'm going to move my bats first. Okay. Uh, let's see, I will have, you've got some dudes left to move, but most likely I'll have the initiative. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could move up there. Oh, yeah, I could do a little magic. How, how many units do you have? I have seven. Oh, right? I have six. Yes, seven. Yeah, and I have six. Okay. This wasn't my original intention with this character, but or this unit, but I'm going to move this bat up there. Just like that. All right. And then, um, let's see, if I was going to do, let me move my other bat first. I might just move up. I need to get in here and support these dudes. So I'm going to go up and most likely... Move my commander up, or my champion up, right there. Just a step behind him, and then everybody's in support range. Cool. Um, all right, so I've moved my Batadactyl's um, ranged attack. So my bat does have a ranged attack. Um, I am going to do the ranged attack in the hopes that I don't actually destroy anything. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to purposefully target the big veggie toad with my ranged attack to try to wound you because um, I don't actually want to destroy you because I, I want initiative next round. Sure. Um, so so I'm, normally the, the small veggie toad's a lot weaker. Um, so I'm rolling two of these ranged dice, or these uh, me melee, now I'm losing my words, uh, two combat dice to do a ranged attack. 
um, because my range skill is two um, and I'm not being supported. And then because my champion is on the board, I get to roll this champion die as well, which potentially lets me do some wounds. Um, and then what are you rolling for your large veggie toad? Right, so the veggie toad base value for defense is one, but the large form with its ability receives plus one defense. So I'll be rolling two. And All then right. because my champion is also on the board, I will also be rolling the champion die. All right, let's do it. Oh, come on, come Ooh. on. Solid two. Oh, yeah. That's All about right. as good as that could have gone. It, it was. All right, so, so to break down my, my roll here quick, since this is the first time we're seeing the champion die in action. Um, so Kenny rolled two defense, um, and I rolled two attack. So because we tied and it's a ranged attack, it's a wash. Nobody gets smashed. Um, but my champion die gave me these two wound symbols. And those two wound symbols mean that I get to put a couple wounds into this large veggie toad. And just like I was saying, it's one of my favorite parts. I'm gonna grab one of these little daggers. So I've got this little dagger and I'm just gonna stick it in the top of that veggie toad and he's got one wound. And we've got all these other wound markers too. And these other wound markers are stretch goals in the Kickstarter that I'm really hoping we unlock. Um, Cause the little dagger is really cool, but I love the variety Ugh, in sticking a wound. <laughs> um, so that little, that big veggie toad now has two wounds. And that is the end of combat and that's the end of my bat and the end for me for the round. Okay. Uh, well, that kind of stings a little bit, but I kind of was hoping you would kill me or kill that toad, so I did have <laughs> a chance at initiative at least because uh, I'm not going to be able to get into combat here during my turn. Um, I will at least be able to move, so let me just do that. I'll get Sigaroth moving up. Yeah. Ooh, let's see. I kind of want to... March a Sigaroth up so that you have a threat that you have to deal with that isn't a champion or a uh, artifact equipped Sigaroth. So I might just do that. Uh, and you'll see a lot of marching because it just is a very useful ability. Uh, so let's just do that. We'll yeah. march Sigaroth up and I am paying one power because they are right next to each other. So they're within close distance. Um, and I'm doing that before I do the move, um, my actual, like, using the mm, yep, command yep. die, right? Um, and so now I'm going to do the remainder of the Sigaroth turn. So okay. I'll do the close move. So he's effectively moved a little bit over a medium distance here uh, in one round, or really in one turn. And then these guys are just going to kind of move on up. Oh, man. Yeah, and those cigarettes are scary. Yeah. Now, Ink is a little bit out of step with the rest, so he's going to have trouble using abilities. That might be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... So I'm thinking what I could do is I could march him up so that he's up in there, but I could also just do that when I need to later. Mm. Uh, so uh, there's no rush. I'll just hang on to my power. Cool. No, that makes sense. So, we'll do that. Uh, so, his turn, he activates. He has no target still because there's no one within medium range. So, that's that. And we move on to the next round, round three. All right. Um, so, again, start of the round, we each gain a power. Mm -hmm. So, I'm back up to four. Yep, I'm at three. And uh, now I'll go ahead. We st Nobody's gotten smashed yet. We've kind of played very uh, safe so far. That's always how it goes the first couple rounds, and then... Here comes round three. I know. <laughs> and yeah. here we Clay go. Bath. Ooh, Ooh. One of each. Ooh, wow. Smart roll. Is this a good roll or not? I'm not sure yet. This could be a good roll That's for me. That's a lot of feet. This could be a good roll. Oh man. Well, it's this is gonna be this is gonna be a little um daring, I think. For <laughs> oh, and it's I gotta go first. Oh boy. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go with this. We'll see how the dice land. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've uh, I've got a couple feet on Insectomite, and then I've got a move and a ranged attack on Batadactyl. Um, what 
position is Sigaroth in? Uh, defense for the okay. round. Yep. Oh, defense for the round. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I know you you got the jump on me, so I need I to <laughs> put up the, the the guard. Okay, so you're on defense for the round, and then that makes your what's your attack pool again? And if on Sigaroth for the round, then his attack will be uh, melee is three, and then range is two. Okay. Okay. So his melee is a lot weaker now. Yes. Much weaker. Um, so I could. Yeah, yeah, I could try that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. This might be a bad decision. I'm going to go with the bats first. So let's start over here. Bat is moving into. Already. <laughs> right up there. And actually, I'm going to go on this side of him, right like that. Oh yeah, he's got that far move, so he can yeah. And what's my, however he wants. My bat has a oh, it has a medium, yeah, medium range. Cool. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, the new okay. There's a lot of options here. Um, all right. So first, let's just see what happens with this. I'm rolling four. Okay. And I've got this on the table. And what is your defense currently? Well, so it's still two because it's veggie toad, but he is wounded twice. So that means I have to swap out two, which is all of my defense dice with weak dice. All right. And then in addition, I have the champion die because the champion's still on the table. And I will not be spending any gems to add to my roll. Will you? He's he's pretty much cooked <laughs> with those wounds in there. So I don't think I'm going to waste anything oh, on boy. that. Here we go. Oh, wow, not a great roll. What do you got? Two. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. But um, you did roll gems. Yes, so. I did roll gems, and because of gem rage, thank the dice gods, <laughs> um, I will use... So gem rage lets you, as the attacker in a melee, convert your gems into raw adrenaline and power during your attack. So, um, so I rolled two gems, um, one natural hit, and then I rolled... Um, my soul ability, so actually my soul ability popped off, so let's take a look at my soul card quick and see if that affects anything. Um, so my soul reaper gives me the ability that when I roll this symbol, I get to either ooh, deal one wound to any unwounded, yes, enemy monsters in a close distance. Uh. Uh, okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Not I'll let you have quite. That one. Not quite there. Um, or I get a, a defense and a gem symbol, which because I'm gem raging, that gem symbol um, could become an extra hit for me. But I don't necessarily need that. So yeah. So I'm gonna. I'll, I'll use that first ability. Essentially, is what I'm gonna do. So okay. to resolve my my attack round. I'm going to end up doing three hits total. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get any gems from that because I did gem rage to succeed. Yep. Um, and uh, and then I think right. Any what do you got going on over there? So. Yeah, I had abilities, but um, he's too far away from the commander because I didn't move my anchor porta up. Um, so he kind of. <laughs> yeah, didn't really have a, a response. Uh, so he's just only got the two defense. Oh, I just bumped that. Um, so yeah, he's he smashed. So All right, cool. that's that. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and remove. Whoop. If you will do the honors. Yeah, go for it. Uh, squish. The first squish of the game. There we go. And then um, I see though that you did get a wound symbol. It looks like. Yes, that's right. So you will take one wound as a result of this. All um, right. Oh, which one do we want? Uh, let's go for that axe. I really am a big fan of that one. Oh, that's another one that's part of the Kickstarter stretch goal, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. The one that is for sure being made is the little dagger. Mm, and then all okay. the other ones are, are stretch goals if we can blow past our funding. Gotcha. Um, all right, so you got me there. I, like I said, have my Soul Reaper ability, which I'm doing to stick your small <laughs> veggie toad with a giant sword. Right in the dome. Uh, so I'll wound that veggie toad. And that resolves combat. Mm -hmm. And then I'll collect two gems because I rolled two combat dice with my roll. Oh, cool. Yep, yep. For, your, for your loss. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just looking at my board. That was both, that was one of my moves. I still have my other, my other dude who gets to move. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. 
You could just shut down my whole veggie toad turn right here. That's true. I could shut down your veggie toad turn, but you do have this brutal looking Sigaroth <laughs> turn coming up. Part of me is thinking like, do I just go for this Sigaroth in front of me and see if I can just like throw my champion at him and just take one of your sigs off the board? Um, and you do have those champion rerolls, so that's ooh, definitely something you could do. You've got good defense right now. Mm -hmm. um, Be what, four on four? All right, I think I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to. Yeah, you're you're a little bit of a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, you're medium. Um, all right, let's just do it. Let's. I'm throwing it in. All right. I'm throwing him in. So he's gonna rush up there. He's got a far move, so I know he can make it. And um, although, what is your veggie toad? He's got a medium move. He does have a medium move. Ooh, he's got a medium move. That means that Veggie Toad could still jump back at me. Mm -hmm. And actually, he currently mm -hmm. has a higher attack I don't than like that. Sigaroth I don't does. Like that. Yeah. I'll put him back for now. Yeah. Um, I could just try to go for that little Toad. Um, I'm gonna stay. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, Oh, you're going to have all these cigarettes to go after my champion if I throw my champion out there. Mm -hmm. um, which might not be terrible. Yeah, you could okay, try to okay. uh, use your Earthquake ability and yeah. see if you can wall them off so that you don't get pounced after... Well, no, I guess he would already be dead. So. Okay, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Because um, your cigarette has a, a pretty short move. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm just going to move in enough to, um, actually, you know what, what is that, medium? Yeah, that's medium. That's medium, cool. Um, so actually, I'll just leave that guy there, and I'm going to, so I'm not going to move him, so I'll remove that die, and then I've got my ranged attacks, so I'm just going to do my ranged attacks, okay. which are medium. Um, I'm going to do... That toad I'm not as scared by, because it does have a wound. Mm -hmm. So I, I might try to throw a wound into that dude. Um, okay. So let's see, so I'm gonna roll. Yeah, let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. My attack is two. Um, I've got my champion on the board, and I'm going to, what is your defense again? Four? Four. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna stick with that. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, uh, only one hit. Whew, uh, only one defense. Ah, man. Okay. Ooh, do I have anything I can spend? I could, I could really go crazy if I needed to. Do I have any abilities? He's technically in range. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my abilities. What do I got? Before roll, before roll. Darn. Okay, I don't have anything I could have spent. I would have had to do it before the roll. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Man, that would have been, I should have gone for the throat. Um, I do leave you with a wound. All right. Um, so I will throw a wound on your character. We'll so tear into him. Let's, uh, let's grab one of these little guys. And, um, and then second attack, um, I was planning on just going for this toad. So I'm just going to do, whoops, yep, medium, um, which we decided that is in medium range. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go for toad, um, which again, same dice pool. Um, it's just Do you want to? I'm not going to spend any gems on this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to spend three gems. So I'm going to spend three gems to add a third attack die to my dice pool. Okay. I need to start building up uh, wounds on my champion, so this might be a good opportunity to use Grave Breath. Hmm. What does Grave Breath do? So Grave Breath will deal a wound to your champion for plus one hit to your results. Ooh. And so. The reason you kind of want to put wounds on your champion is because of their uh, last laugh ability, which lets you kind of explode and just shoot all of your wounds uh, to any of the nearby monsters. So kind of building up a little bomb over here. Uh, so that toad is within medium, so that will cost me two power. So I will do that. And I will deal my wound right now to right. my champion. There we are. All right, so you have a guaranteed hit then? I have a guaranteed hit. Okay, and that was an ability 
Um, on the player cards, you can see next to the abilities, some of them say during turn, some say before roll, some say after roll. So the ability tells you when you have to use it. So like we said earlier, all my abilities are before roll abilities, so I didn't have anything I could do after the roll, whereas uh, Kenny's Grave Breath sounds like is a before roll. It is a before roll, yep. All right, here we go. Come on, dice. That's um, more like it. Two hits. Three defense. Okay, ooh, you had your soul well, pop off as well. And, f yeah, a fourth one. Okay, so we know our, our hits seem to have missed, or at least my hits missed. Mm -hmm. um, so you you had better defense than my attack. Um, but let's see if my soul, oh yeah, ooh, close distance. So again, my soul card, um, I guess I could gain, I could either gain a gem from it or I could put a wound in an unwounded close monster, but there are no unwounded close mm -hmm. enemy monsters. So I'm just gonna use it to basically gain a gem is what's gonna happen with that. Yeah. What does, uh, what does your character do? We haven't seen your soul card pop off yet. Yeah, so Forsaken Seer is, uh, I can either deal a heal to any other close friendly monster, uh, or I can do a plus one attack hit or, and plus one gem. Uh, I don't have any monsters within close of, um, uh, yes I do. Yeah, I could heal that Sigaroth right now. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to do that, because alter alternatively, I could take the gem, but I think I would rather have that wound off of the Sig so that he can, mm -hmm. he can keep surviving here. Uh, so I will do that. Okay. And that resolves after the roll, so we'll finish the roll and then we'll get to that. Yep, yep, and then yeah, everything else, um, Nothing else affects my roll, and okay. I collected my gem from resolving my die. Okay, so I survived the roll. Uh, so then, yeah, then I'll grab this, and that is him healed. Um, let's see. All right, and that is my Batadactyls are all done. Um, so it is over to you. All righty. So now, I think you're very conveniently just out of range of my cigarettes. Uh, I hope so. So. All right, let's just. Oh, yep. <laughs> just a judge. hair. Is that just a hair? All right, all right. Maybe if you if you flatten him out a little more, his base yeah. will expand <laughs> and just give you that a uh, little bit extra. I don't think that's tournament legal. I think we'll <laughs> skip on that. Yeah. So they can get in. They do also have ranged attacks, so it might just be that we take advantage of that. Maybe we just just start peppering one of these insectomites mm, and yep. see if. I think all three of them might be able to get it. Let me see. Let's, I'm doing a close attack. Or sorry, a close move first. Oops, I did not mean to bump that. Mm, if I'm doing that, a close attack, or a close strategy. move, <laughs> and then from there, I'm doing a... Uh, that's oh, just boy. millimeters oh. away from being in range. <sighs> and he's also uh, just out of range. Oh, man, I am in just the worst position here. Well... Hmm. Although this is a little bit helping the enemy. Um, oh man, that would just be awful. You potentially are set up to have initiative because we have tied counts right now. Mm -hmm. So if you did throw your cigarettes up there, if you got initiative next round, you could potentially do double moves and really just kind of swarm. Okay. Yeah. But it, that, obviously that's kind of that's pretty risky. It is risky, but at least. We would have to roll for initiative before we roll command dice and do all the assigning, so I'd be able to pick the cigarette that I need depending on if I win or lose initiative. So that's not the worst idea. So thanks for that tip. I know. Yeah. Let's just start moving. I know. Let's just get in the mix. Yeah. And I need to do something about my anchor port here. He's kind of getting left behind. I it's kind of funny. It, yeah, we're just playing with clay, but it, it is kind of a high strategy game. Like positioning and movement is very, very important in Necromolds. Yeah, quite. So you do have two movement. I kind of want to... Yeah. They're a little close. So here's what I want to do. I want to move him. He's in range. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's make you make sure that we're yeah. spending a foot to get in there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want them too close so that you can hit one and then hit the other, although you might still be able to, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should have moved. Oh, well, no, I need them to be close. That's, that's the idea, just be a threat. Okay. Uh, so that's the movement done. All right. Uh, 
let's start shooting. So I do have a shot. Okay, okay. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which unit? Oh, that one, yeah. Well, I'm now I'm thinking, right? I could soften up your insectomite so that whenever you do attack, mm. you are coming at me a little weaker. And I do have gems now that I could kind of beef up my defense when you jump in. Alternatively, I could go right for your commander and just see if I, you know, see what happens. You only have two defense, but you are supported. So that is also something to consider. And actually, you're supported on both of them. So yeah, mm. I don't think you're going to be getting killed by it, this shot. So I think I want to wound your insectomite. So we'll okay. go for that. Okay. Uh, so it is two. He's not... Not wounded because of my Forsaken Seer. Thank you for that. And then, of course, I'm rolling the champion die because the champion's still on the board. All right, and my uh, Insectomite is being supported by Batadactyl, so I will get a free reroll part of this defense. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Oh, not bad. Two. Um, three defense. So I think my defense. All right. Um, I got two gems. And then I've got my soul ability again. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, okay. I will. Uh oh, did this backfire? <laughs> yeah, okay, no, I'm, I'm all good. <laughs> things, things just, the balance gets reset. Um, so I will, I'll hold on resolving my soul die. Um, right. So my, yeah, so my defense succeeds. Is there anything that your character can do that you, to modify your dice results? Nope. Uh, his abilities are before turns, and he's not holding the Fortune's hairpin, which is the only after roll that I have. So that is me done. All right. So my defense succeeded, so those are all resolved. I get a couple gems here, and then I'm going to... Technically, you do the soul ability at the very end. Mm -hmm. It's a special, so I'll go ahead and grab my two gems. Yep, and um, I will grab a gem as well. And then... And I also do a wound to you as oh, part of this. Okay. I'm going to be doing a wound to you as well mm. from my soul ability. So, okay, all right. And the souls are kind of cool. The souls, this reaper, the soul reaper, is basically the the essence of a creature that I'm using to power my necromold army. So that is why I'm able to do these special things. Um, just like Kenny's army is being um, being powered by the soul of a forsaken seer, um, which gives him the ability to uh, use his soul power. Um, I'm going to grab a little, I'll grab a little dagger, and yep, I'll just, I'm just gonna pop that back into you. Yeah, I got a convenient slot for it. Uh, just uh, right in the shoulder. Ugh. Ugh. We'll collect a few of those, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, that's a bummer, but that's okay. Uh, anything else? That, that was the one shot you said you thought you had on. Yeah, the, everything else is out of range, so I think yeah. that's all I'm gonna get. Mm, and you're kind of low on power. I am a little, yeah. Having my commander not in the mix like you have it is costing me, so that might have to change soon. And yeah, that might be something I do next turn. All right, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Um, so is it back to me? It is, yes. Okay. So Roth is done. Ooh, so you, you still have that little veggie toad. Okay, you have both veggie toads mm -hmm. there. Mm, nothing's gonna be, I can't really do anything to them. Okay. Sigaroth is in defensive position, but I really just need to try to push through that, I think. Um, so let's, let me see. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we get a little crazy. So we could go, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to first spend a power okay. to march. I'm in a close distance there. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, do I wanna do that too? Oh, I'll save that one. I'll save that. Okay, so I'm going to move up, and I'm going to march just a close distance there just to get close to you. Mm -hmm. The thing with march is you can't end a march in contact in combat, um, which is which what makes it a march. Um, so I'm just going to kind of get close to you there, and we'll just put me about there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to move. I'm going to use my move die, and I'll move this back one first who moves up a close distance, and he ends up right around that spot on the board. So he's kind of like right there, right by that dot. And then this guy, I'm actually gonna move just a little bit sideways, just like that. <laughs> I'm Here not touching Sigaroth, but I'm touching Veggie Toad. 
And I'm going to try to see if I can take out that Veggie Toad before it gets its move. Mm. Um, so I'm going to be rolling. I am wounded. Uh, my normal attack dice are six. Um, so I normally roll six of these, but because I have one wound, I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to put a wounded die in there. So I have five normal dice and one wounded die um, for this attack. And then, of course, I still have my command or my um, champion on the board, so I get my champion die as well. Uh, so my toad is healthy. He's just got his two defense dice. Uh, I have my champion die. Now, do I actually want to spend any do gems? anything about this? Yeah. Or, or or do any abilities? Yeah, I can't afford any abilities currently because my commander's too far away. Okay. But okay. I. I mean, what are the odds, really? If I spend three gems, well, I could spend seven gems and get four dice, and that'd throw you for a loop. Oh, but uh, hmm. I think I'll pass. Uh, he's okay. not gonna make it. Okay. Oh god, here we go. And this guarantees initiative, so. Oh, you oh, might have man. trouble beating that though. Oh man. Oh boy. One, two, three, four. Okay. Whoo! This was cutting it close. Yep. Okay, so I got my, I got my four hits. Um, and, ooh, you got oh, a couple wounds. That's going to be nasty. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a good roll. Yep. <laughs> um, all right, so I, I do survive. Um, so I survive because Insectomite's ability, which lets it win on ties. Um, so I, I win the combat. I don't have any after roll abilities that I can do, so I can't really modify that. Um, so, yeah, so that's just, that is what it is. So okay. um, anything that you've got to modify your roll. Uh, nope. He does not have the hairpin in him. The toad doesn't. So that's all I have is this and two wounds, which, yeah, that's about as well as I could have gone. And clearly I should have added another die. <laughs> but, um, but that's going to be it. Yeah. All right. So I'll go ahead and... He is smashed. Squish another toad. And... Noticing um, a trend. Yeah, and then you've got some wounds. Yeah, let's just get a couple daggers in here. Let's just oh. go... Okay, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna recover. Ooh. Which, he is one wound away from just being dropped. Yes. So. Yeah, I suppose there's not a lot of units that are like that. Mm -hmm. Insectomite's kind of one of the, one of the ones that would be most affected by that. Um, all right, so that was the first move. I still have another move. I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm gonna pull this insectomite back. My wounded insectomite back into that wounded, um, yeah, I'm gonna pull him back into that wounded Sigaroth. I'm gonna spend a power, I'm gonna spend a power to do Rock Slide. Um, so it's a before roll spend. During this combat, count all wound symbols as uh, hit symbols instead, or else just add a wound to my results. Um, so I'm gonna spend that before the roll and uh, and here we go. And this is the second move for that dude. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be ro rolling. Let's see. I've got three wounds in me, so I'm going to be rolling all three wound dice um, plus three healthy dice. Okay. All right. So that's my that's my pool plus, of course, my champion die. All right. What are you going to be rolling? So I think I'm just going to spend gems. All, all right. right. I would be normally rolling my three with the wounded die. Um, and then now I'm going to add a fifth healthy die by spending uh, five gems. Cool. I have an opportunity to kill here, and I want to take advantage of it. Um, and then I can still potentially get initiative if I get this mm. kill. So. All right. Still good. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. Four. Um, one... Two, I got a couple of gems, so I could gem rage to get mm -hmm. me to four, which would put me at a tie. Um, I've got some other tricks up my sleeve too, but what, uh, and actually, you know what, I'll do beforehand. I'm gonna keep these gems, because my rock slide paid off. I got the double wound symbol, mm. which actually becomes two hits. Um, so just right there, I've got four hits. And to tie you, which because I'm insectomite, is enough to succeed. Mm, um, yep. So currently, 
because of that, I am victorious. So it goes to you. Can you modify your dice pool at all? Yeah, I did get the special side. So I could add a hit and a gem, but that's unfortunately an attack hit. And I am mm. rolling for defense. So that kind of leaves me with no options. Okay. Um, so I will... Mm, I'll still take that option on my Forsaken Seer only because I get a gem out of it. Uh, and I don't really have any other wounded monsters nearby, so. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Yep. All right, cool. So I'm going to grab, um, so we'll resolve the dice. Another cool thing, um, this dice pool ended up actually being great for me. So resolved that in order to get this. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and resolve this. So pull that out and... Wow, we're really getting in tight there. Yeah. This is still round three. Round three is where the chaos happens. Oh, you bet. And all right, there we go, another squish. Um, and you get your gems back for that. So I get my five from the roll, and then I also get a fifth oh, and wow. sixth gem. Or so, yeah, sorry, a sixth and seventh gem. Wow, okay. Yeah, so we're rolling. So you just got a little full refund and a little extra. And I have guaranteed in it. Well, I already did. <laughs> and then <laughs> Initiative. I get two gems from these. So I'm going to go ahead and grab um, two oh, yep. gems from the pool. There you are. Thank you. So I'll grab a couple gems for that. And then finally, I did get two heal symbols. So again, this is new to the expansion, which is this little heart symbol you can see right there. So that means I actually heal two wounds from my roll, which I was hoping would happen, because once you start rolling this many wounds, chances are you're going to at least heal one of them, or you're just going to lose and be smashed. Um, so I'll pull two wounds out, mm -hmm. and now my insectomite is in a healthier condition. And finally I've got, that was that one's two moves, this one still has a move left, and I'm actually going to, I know you have initiative next round, so I'm going to try to do as much as I can uh, as much as I can this round. And I'm going to, I'm going to spend a power to march. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to spend a power to march, and then I'm going to move into, ooh, can I go for the one that's not the seer? I want to go for the easier target if I can. Let's see. So there's a close distance. Yeah, I totally could. Mm-hmm. Looks like it. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> the risk is it does put me further from my Batadactyl. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, I'm going to be out of range probably of my Batadactyl. Unless I stood sideways. Um, but I'm either going to win or lose the combat. If I, if I go against that dude and I win the combat, I guess I'm in de a good defensive spot. Um, but you do have re-rolls, but I'm healthy. Oh. But then I'm going to be potentially in range of my support. I'm going to try it. Yeah, Ooh, okay. I'm going to go for it. All right. Okay, so I spent my power. I'm moving him in. I'm standing him sideways. Okay. <laughs> and just to get that little bit of, I'm moving, I got to see this. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I think that looked legit, right, Kendall? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, can I get that? What about, what about this corner? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Nah, it's barely there. All okay. right. Okay. Whew. It's just, it's there by a hair. Um, all right, so he's still in defensive support range, but I have to survive this roll, which this is going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'm fully healthy, so I'm rolling six. Um, roll my champion die. I'm going to go, ooh, I don't have any power. Ooh, I am close. I could rock slide again for some extra hits. I'm going to... I'm going to have to do it. I'm, I'm going for it. It'd be great to take out one more Cigarroth before you have initiative. Um, yeah, I'm just going to play Brutal. I'm spending a power to perform Rock Slide this round, just like the last time, but now I have no power left. Okay. Um, what, uh, anything you want to do before this roll? Yes. Uh, so I'm sitting on 11 gems here. I can totally go for six dice. I might just do that. Um... Because it would be great to take down a fully healthy insectomite here. Uh, and I think I just do it. Although you're going to end up with a ton of gems <laughs> after this. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's, let's go nuts here. All right. Let's spend 11 gems. And oh, boy. He's not in there. But these two are. And that's my rule. 
I do still have Fortune's Hairpin. That's an after roll ability, so I can choose to not use it or use okay. it, depending on what happens here. So, um, I always got that in the back pocket. All right, here we go. Oh, God. That's a lot of shields. I don't oh, know. Oh, my focus. God. I'm seeing, I'm seeing trips. Oh, no. All right. Well. Let me put my little, I'll put my roll out here. Oh, yeah, this is decent. Okay, so what, uh, let me, let me count my total flat hits. So I got the wound symbols plus these two triples plus this single. I'll keep my gems for now. So that puts me at three, six, seven, eight, nine hits. Nine. Can you overcome nine hits? Well, see now, I've got oh. five. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, defense. My symbol here gives me attack hits and gems, so that's not going to help me there. Um, I do still have the Fortune's Hairpin, which would let me reroll one of your dice. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Interesting. But... You said you're at nine? I'm at nine, yeah. So I can, at best, bring you down to six yeah. to my five, and you would still beat me. And I could still gem rage if I really needed to. Yeah, man. That rock slide's really working for you. You've rolled, yeah, <laughs> double wounds. I know, I know, both yeah. Times. I got the, yeah, the best roll for rock slide, for the risk of rock slide. <laughs> right. Hmm. So I think that's it. I think I just have to eat it. All right. This is a big victory. This is a tough one right here. This little... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Go for it. Yeah, grab that. And you're going to get a ton of gems back. Well, <laughs> not as much as I put in. <laughs> um, I'll take six back. I'll get two gems. Oh, well. Six back, plus I guess I did my ability here, which gave me four gem sides, so I get another four back. So almost as much as I put in. Oh boy. That's quite a roll, and that's quite a setback. Those cigarettes are just scary. <laughs> those are scary. I wanted, to, I wanted to get those off the board as fast as I could. Yep. Um, but I I, I, at the detriment, I have no power left. And it, actually, you're, you're just one spot ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left on my side. Well, it's toad time. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, here he is, the comeback kid. Oh, man. Do we just go right for that bat, do you think? <laughs> Probably. What's your defense? Two? Yeah, I mean, that... The, You're out of range for support? Out of range. The bat's never going to be weaker. Oh, man. I got all these gems. Well, you do, too. But and I guess you'd have, to, you'd have the choice to do that. But we're looking at two on two right now with kind of an advantage to the attack here a little bit, so I think we just go for it. Uh, that's a medium move, so that's with Oh plenty yeah, you range. got plenty. Although actually, I want to be on the back side of that, so let's actually mm, properly yep. measure. Okay, yeah, I can just freely be over here. That's totally fine. All right. Whew. I'm gonna go with, uh, let's see, so I got two of these, but one is wounded. Yeah, so and I need to... Still have my commander. I'm the attacker here, right? So I got to decide what I'm doing first before you have the, before you are forced to make decisions. Yeah. Um, so do I want to spend three? Oh yeah, it is a low cost just to up that toad's chances. Yeah, that's that's another thing I like about those. You can just really juice them up pretty quick if you need to. Yeah, I mean, I guess same with my dude. I'm only rolling two. Yeah. I could throw one more in there just to try to up his defense and take a toad off the board. Yeah. Man. Mm, we'll see what you do first. All right. Let's, uh, let's spend three. Um, not in range to do any uh, abilities, so I won't be able to do that. Um, yeah, so let's do that. And one of these is going to be wounded, so that's going to be my roll. Okay, okay. Um, all right, I'm going to... Hmm. If I can, I think it's worth spending three. If I can survive and take out this toad, then I really, you've got a lot to kind of come back from. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to spend it. I'm going to have to spend it. Um, so I'm going to add one more of these to my dice pool. And there we go. That's my pool. All right, here we go. Yeah, here we are. Uh, oh. Okay. So, I have one hit. 
Mm, I've got four defense. Four defense. That's not going through. Well, so I do leave you with two wounds. Okay. So that's Ooh. nice. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Um, all right, and I don't think there's anything I can do about that, so I'm going to, yeah, my dice are basically resolved. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm going to survive combat, but I'm going to, and I'm going to end up with one gem. Yep. I will not gem rage, because I can't do anything with that, <laughs> with my one gem. Uh, so I'll take yeah, three gems, uh, four gems total, actually. And he is tasty. But now my guy's super wounded. Yes, he is. Let's just start grabbing these. Let's just go with another X. I'm yeah, just, I'm a big just, fan of just dig it in there. Right down there. There we are. Oh man, okay. Um, well, here we go. That's that, and... Well, I'm reduced down to two monsters. Let's see how, how much more damage we can do here. That was round three. That was, <laughs> that was <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> here we go. Um, we gain a power, so at least we get that back. At least yep. we get something. And then at the start of my turn, since I lost my monster holding the yep. artifact I had, the Fortune's Hairpin, I'm going to assign a new monster to have it. And that will be my other Sigaroth, who's in the thick of it already. Yeah, so when you when you when your artifact bearer gets smashed, you get to redeploy the artifact at the start of the next round. And then if your champion gets smashed, you redeploy it on your next turn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all right, well, you have the initiative. I right. sure do, by a bit. Here so, we go. Yeah, need some good, good sides. Oh, need some not feet. The best row, not the best oh. Row. <laughs> oh, what man. did I just say? I need feet. Oh, man. Oh, that's dice for you. All right. That's, that's brutal. We're tossing one. We're going to reroll. I'm staying with mine, I think. I'm just going to have to. I mean, I could just toss the magic. <sighs> oh, man. Now remind me, I can... You can toss the magic, get the reroll, and the gems. Now do I... I think I might oh, do something similar. I think I would rather have feet than ranged attacks. Yeah. I'm going to do, yeah, I'm gonna do okay. similar. So that's... Because I don't need the magic side anymore, because uh, we are on the attack. So I'll gain two. I could do... Hope for feet. Actually, do I want these two? I could... There you go. Okay, let me think about this. <sighs> Deciding if I'm gonna make Grave Ghoul Chicago style. <laughs> I, I could just hold that magic back and do that. And then those Grave Ghouls can get in there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the, won't take the gems. I'm gonna stick with this roll. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna change this to a feat. Boom, get Grave Ghoul in on the action. And uh, we'll put the ranged attack probably just on, right on Insectomite in case they, in case I, get, I still have one standing after, yep, after you try to smash through them. Um, all right, I'm all set. All right, so am I. All right, do your worst. Well, <laughs> it's not too bad, I promise. Uh, I need to get my commander in here, my champion. Uh, yeah. So let me just start by marching him. Just start yeah. getting them in the mix. That I makes want, sense. So you have no feet on your insectomite. You do have a medium range attack, and I need to be aware of that. But chances are I'm going to be okay, especially since the champion has rerolls. Yep. Um, so I probably will be burning through that, but he just he needs to get in there. And actually, if he's in medium range to be shot at, that means he's in medium range to shoot back the next time. So, Okay. So we'll start with that. Okay. He's still out of range. Oh, well, no, he's in range now. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to move Sigaroth. How far can you move? So I, what I, well, I'm going to keep hitting that on it. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to kind of bounce around. I'm real afraid to jump into this guy because yeah. he's got that big old crystal sword on him. But... I might have to just to shut down one of mm. these rounds. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, if I don't do that, I'm getting cleaned out. He's only got two defense flipped on this side. So I think that's what we have to do. So I'll move him. Looks like I can move him like right there. Yeah, I see what you're trying to do. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. And then I, yep. Yeah. And I can make contact that way. It does put me out of range for my commander again, my champion. Yeah. 
Um, well, that's just gonna have to be how it is. You just have to adapt. All right, I'm going to. Okay, so you're up against him. My defense is four. My attack is. I am six. supported. And I will not spend any gems. Okay. Ooh, yeah, you have a six attack. Yeah. This could get nasty. And you have fortunes pinned. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, I. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'd rather see if I can get maybe some wounds out there. I, before we get started, I am going to spend and get a seventh. Now, if you don't mind me borrowing one of your dice. Oh, wow. A <laughs> seventh. Yep. This, this needs to happen. <laughs> I'm, part of me is wondering, do I, do I throw a rock slide out there one more time <laughs> just in case? You well, know what? I'm going to do that because worst case, I do leave you with an extra wound. So rock slide there uh, is for attacks only. So the defense symbol is not oh, lit up on that. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I can't do that for defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, bummer. I mean, that makes sense. That's probably, we probably balanced it that way for <laughs> a reason. Yeah. Because uh, rocks like to be nasty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't have anything I can do on the defense. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I think I'm going to stick with my four. I feel healthy on the board right now. Okay. Uh, I think I want to save my gems. Yeah, I, that's going to come barreling down here in a bit. But. All right. There's a lot of dice. Oh, I see a lot of, a lot of shapes. Ooh, I, get, I see them too. Not the ones I want, though. Yeah. Not the ones I want. No, I've, I've got a few of those. Uh, I'm kind of looking at eight right now. Eight? Okay. I'm at uh, two, four, five. I'm at five. I don't really have anything that can change my dice. So, yep. So I'm just sticking at, I'm stuck at five. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have to gem rage. That's good. So I will... Ooh. I'll just smash, I guess. All right, yeah, yeah, go for it. And then I will leave you with a wound. Oh, man. I forgot what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. Oh, I suppose that was the first smash That's the my board. first smash. Oh, man. Oh, we first got a spider, spider on the board now. Yeah, round three was definitely green, t green purple. Yep. Ugh. All right. He's just get a little wound. sword in you. I will, yeah, collect two gems from this, which oh, puts him back up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could do that again if I need to on the next roll. Mm. Uh, I didn't need to do Fortune's Hairpin. Uh, oh, you know what? what? What was your defense at? My defense... Wait, or what was your attack? My attack was at... Uh, eight? Eight, I think you yeah. I was at five. Mm -hmm. Six, seven... Okay, I had a free reroll. I'm gonna just going to reroll this triple and see if oh, I can get one yeah. more gem. Yep. Nah, not quite. All right. Um, let's see. I did also get the power symbol, which I mm. think that's the first time we've seen that so far. Yeah. Um, which just moves me up on the power track. Let me show it on my, this camera here. Yep. So, yeah, so you can see you got a little power symbol there on the die, and that, uh, that every time you roll that, you gain a power. Yep. And that is that, which kind of puts me in range now. Because now we can afford to do medium power stuff mm. or medium range yeah. things. But I need to be in melee. And I think I'm going to move myself out of range. But then I'm wondering, do I dive into that insectomite? Mm. Uh, the problem is I'm going to get shot at by Grave Ghoul. And I'm also considering there's probably not good odds of me cleaning out your whole board. Do I just dive right for your commander here? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see you're thinking, yeah. Yeah. And try to go for maybe a commander win? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. It's unlikely, but I think also... It does give you another option. Yeah. I think that's what we do. Yeah. I think we have to do that and just... Yeah, that makes sense. Because that's... We're going for Hail Marys here. So, just jump in. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I measured that and it's in range. And I want to make sure that I'm in range of your uh, Grave Ghouls once okay. we're done with this. Okay, let me see here. So I'm, I'm, my defense is only two. I get my commander. Um, it's on, I'm on defense. So you, you're rolling six. Oh, I'm rolling seven. Or oh, actually, okay. I do get some gems from my smat. My, oh, yeah, my you death, do. So mm -hmm. I do get my four, four gems from that. So yeah, I'm going to spend seven again. Okay. One of my dice is wounded, so you can have yours back because oh, yeah. I have my six and then my oh, one boy. wounded die. Champion's still on the table. Do I even spend anything on this i don't think so i think i just have to save my gems for the next big combat this isn't the next big combat um 
And so yeah, I know you have all those rerolls, so I really want to throw as much as I can at this to force you to spend rerolls. Yeah, yeah. Because those are they kind of operate like hit points for champions, but okay, here we I just go. need to chip at them. Yeah, here we go. Okay, that's not bad. Well, um, that one. I mean, it's nothing, nothing crazy. So I'm looking at six. Yep, I only got uh, two defense. I could get three with my soul popping off. Um, there's nobody who's unwounded, so I, in range for the soul ability. So I'm gonna have to use the second version of that. Mm -hmm. So two. So I'm at three defense. Um, so I will lose combat, but I will do. I'll gain two. I'll gain four gems. Okay. All right. So pop that out. All right. Grab my gems. Another right, spider. There you go. Um, and then I lost my champion, so now my, boom, my last stand ability pops off, Earthquake. So Igneous has this ability, Earthquake, which is reposition any terrain pieces already on the map without preventing monster movement across the map, which just means I can't just cut the board in half with the, the mm -hmm. terrain pieces, uh, and I gain a power. Or I can gain three power. Ooh, that's actually interesting. Earlier, I would have totally just taken the train move, but I'm so depleted on power right now, and my champion could really use some power. Because what, what could I do? Worst case scenario, I'd really be trying to separate you and your, your champion and your Sigaroff, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not too worried about that this round. So I'm just going to take the, the three power gain, okay. actually. One, two, three. Moving train pieces is fun, but I have I feel like I've got pretty good mobility right now, so I don't think there's anything in my way. Mm -hmm. um, and then for my roll, I did roll a heal, so I'm gonna go oh. ahead and just grab that for you. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, let me think about this. Order of operations. Mm -hmm. Healing happens last. Mm -hmm. Does healing happen after Soul special text. Uh, soul special is the very last thing to happen. Okay. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So he would become unwounded. Yeah, so I would totally... Yeah, we'll have to... I, I'm trying to think if I would have known this or if I have to, like, lock that in. So I'll have to relook at that. But he would become unwounded, which then would have left me with this on as an option. Mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, which I would have known... Yeah, that's what it would have been. I would have known you had... Yeah, I, you would have had all the information you needed. Yeah. In order to do that, so then I'll just I'll just pop you right. <laughs> Give him a different yeah. one. Yeah. Give you a different little wound in that hole. Okay. And yep, now we're all settled. Um, all right. All right. Ooh. And yep, you didn't survive, so those wounds aren't needed. Okay. And I already got those gems. So okay. now it's time to weather the storm. Here we go. Yep. We'll I go have with um, one gem. <laughs> we'll we'll start with actually, you know what. Maybe we do Grave Ghoul first, because then I could, I can focus back there. Um, so we'll do, yeah, we'll do Grave Ghoul first. Grave Ghoul, do we have the far distance we need? Uh, we do far, far. No, uh, no, just out of range, just a hair out of range, I think. Yep. All right, so here's what we'll do. Um, we'll do range attack first on. Grave Ghoul. Okay. Grave Ghoul has their magic ability activated, which means that they have a far distance. Mm -hmm. So both these um, uh, Grave Ghouls can target. Whoops, Sigaroth. Yep. Um, I can do Rock Slide if I really wanted to. Or actually, no, I gotta. Let me redeploy. Who's my commander? Ooh, this is oh, tricky. All right. Do I go with Insectomite, who's kind of in it? Um, but, oh gosh, this is risky. I could go with Insectomite. Um, even with this wound. So I'm just going to go right there mm -hmm. into, into that character. That is my champion. Um, and then anyways, um, ranged attacks. So let's do, let's do the furthest one first. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to be rolling three. Oh, I actually have a decent ranged attack. So I'm rolling three. Got my champion. I'm not wounded. 
and I don't, I'm not close enough to spend anything as far as power goes. So okay, I'm rolling three. I'm rolling two. Uh, yeah, I'm not supported. I'm not going to be using any abilities. Um, well, currently I could use the hairpin, but that's after we roll. Uh, and then I do have a wound, so I'm replacing the die with my wound die. All right, here we die. go. Or actually, what, what's your dice pool right now? Two with the champion. Two with the champion. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend, I'm at three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend four. Okay. And uh, see if I can just take this dude out. Mm, okay, all right. Oh, That's boy. not what you want to see. Ooh. Big old This would have been hard to beat anyways. Oh, no kidding. This is a good roll. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Anything you can do to beat that. A bunch of hits. There's no way. I don't, okay. <laughs> I don't have the dice to do that. Um, all right. And so I get one gem. All right. One I'll gem back. Three gems. And here we go. Uh, Anything you want to re-roll just for the... No, because you can't get gems from Yeah, that. I can't get a gem from yeah, that. So there's no point in doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Here's your hairpin. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Done. All right. That opens up my final three. Three on one. Let's see if I can yeah, we don't make count it him. happen. <laughs> I know. He's pretty much toast. He's just like, why is he there? Yeah. He's... Why is he back there? Um, all right. So ranged attack. He was out of range. Mm -hmm. um, but, hmm, point of inquiry. Can I, in the middle, I just resolved him. Can I, inter I can't remember, can I interrupt the resolving to do a commander move? I think so, yeah. I think we said you could. It would make sense. I mean, you would do it anyway for a before roll, right? That's so. true, that's true. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend... And I am during my turn. Yep, totally. So during my turn, I'm going to spend March. I'm going to spend two to March. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to spend two power. I'll make sure I'm not blocking the camera. So I'm, what was I at? Four, I mm -hmm. think. One, two. I'm going to go down to two. I'm going to march him up. Okay. A close distance. And just actually, just a hair. Just I don't, enough. Just, just what I need. Yeah, we don't need to get in range of anything and, else. And, oh, yeah. No, my Grave Ghoul, Tremor Stomp's not as interesting with Grave Ghoul because my melee is the same as my ranged attack. Mm, yeah. Um, all right, but I could at least, I could at least come closer. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I have the, I have the range to mm -hmm. I mean, get in there a little closer. So then I, if I need to, I'm closer there. Um, all right, so... I did march. I paid for that. Um, now I'm going to make my ranged attack, which I'm now in far distance of. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling three healthy commander die, and um, and then I don't have any abilities that I can really spend for this one. I guess I could. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'm going to spend a power. Okay. And I'm going to try to rock slide. I okay. can rock slide this. All right. Let's see. I think. So I do have re-rolls here, but this is like end of the line here. I need to, <laughs> I need to survive. I have the champion die for sure. Uh, I have a base defense of three, which is not the worst, although one of those is wounded, so I have a weak die. Uh, I, what I could do is Grave Breath. Mm. It will put a wound on me, but that will... It's still better to downgrade a die and then get a guaranteed hit mm. than it is to, to do nothing. Yep, yep. And then I will still have a power, and then I can use Mindless Fury if I'm doing an attack later so that I can ignore my wounds whenever I'm attacking. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay. So I'll spend okay. one for Grave Breath and targeting you know myself um, before the roll. So deal a wound. Um which will, yeah, so I had three, I swapped one out with my new wound, and then now I have an extra hit just added to my roll. Yep, just a guaranteed. Yep. All right, and I'm just gonna, yeah, I just got my three, I'm sticking with the three. Okay. There we go. Oh boy. Oh wow. Oh wow, yeah, this is gonna be hard to beat. <laughs> I got okay. your same roll. Did you really? Did we get oh, the same roll? Look at this, I got. It looks better from this side of the table. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, oh, so I have one. 
my <laughs> my grave breath. Is... Well, you do have a ton of. Well, you do have all your re rolls, so you do. Yeah. You could potentially turn around. That's gonna be hard to beat. So I got three. Well, I have to. Yeah. Four. Gems, not anything, and this doesn't give me a hit. So, um, so this is going to be another defense in a gem. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Here we go. Crystal sword doesn't do anything either because it's not melee. Yep. So I will have to start spending rerolls because I lose otherwise. So I'll spend one. Uh, the first one I want to reroll is this one. Uh, actually, let me see this. No, I want to spend the triple. Um, you have four, five. Ooh. Right? No, you have four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yep, go ahead. So I'm trying to beat four, or yep. meet four, even. Yep, yeah, and if you can meet it, then you're good. I actually have to reroll all three, because oh. the best I can do is two here, and then oh, one on man. each of these. So this has to be... Oh, but you have one guaranteed. You have one guaranteed. And I have, Oh, that's right. I have a guaranteed one. You're right. Yeah. Oh, so this boy. needs to be... The double. The double. Oh. What are the odds? Okay. You can still... You can, you're, it's still potential, but you need to get the double on okay, the next yeah. one. All right, here we go. Oh. Jam. I think that's the game then, because if so. I re-roll, that is a two. Hey, there it is, there it is, but you're still... But I still have only three. And you three. don't have any power that you can spend to do anything that would... Mm -mm. My fortune's hairpin is off the table, because it just got knocked mm -hmm. out, so I can't re-roll. Um, my abilities are before roll, so that is it. All right, here all we right. go. Here it comes. All right, let's just get all that out of there. All right, uh, all right. There it is. Uh, and that is it. Oh, good game. Good, good game. game. Yeah. So that was a full playthrough of Necromold's Call to Arms. Um, and as you can see, we've lost a little bit of the fog in the room, but that's okay. Uh, Kenny, are there any thoughts that you have post-battle um, as far as the st strategies, things you might have wanted to do different, or, um, or more importantly, are there any rules or things that like, like that we needed to tweak um, since this isn't the final, final print yet right. of the expansion? Uh, well, I think for sure my champion being in the back of the board for most of the game kind of bit me a little bit. Uh, my abilities got more expensive, and I just wasn't able to respond the way that I needed to uh, to your onslaught of insectomites. Um, I don't know that I'd have any balance tweaks, especially since I feel like it was my fault that I lost. So, uh, And then, of course, you know, as with any other dice game, you have <laughs> unlucky rolls, uh, which I had a couple of, so... Uh, no, I don't think I had any changes. I don't know. How, how did you feel your army went? I think it, it, I think it went pretty good. Like, I think the, the units that I have are pretty flexible. So I, I feel like Batadactyl is a very flexible unit. Mm -hmm. So is Grave Ghoul. So I had a lot of versatility in my army if I wanted to push into melee mm -hmm. or if I just wanted to hang back and, and do some ranged attack shots. Um, I, got, I definitely got lucky with some of my wound symbols early on and just being mm -hmm. able to, yeah. like, wound these guys and try to neuter that part of the board early I think was really helpful yep and then and then get kind of just pressure on a few different sides yep. on that lineup of cigaroths um, I think that that helped a lot mm -hmm. and then just getting yeah getting a few lucky um, attack rolls as well uh, I'm trying to think I don't think there was anything I think I used igneous's abilities um, almost all of them we used last stand used rock slide a few times. I never used Tremor Stomp, but I, there were a couple instances where I was kind of kicking myself where I probably should have. Mm -hmm. But part of that is just because I was using a Grave Ghoul and not something with a, a better... Um, like Tremor Stomp would actually be great for Insectomite, who has right. a, a huge melee dice pool and not a, not a big ranged attack dice pool. Mm -hmm. um, because, in case you want to know, because um, we didn't actually use it, Tremor Stomp's ability lets me replace my dice pool with a number of weak dice, those weak um, red dice equal to my unit's um, melee skill. So, so obviously that can have a, that's a, a huge swing or a huge boost to that dice pool um, mm -hmm. for a ranged attack. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think that was really it. I think, I think one thing that benefited me, which it could have, it could have been a detriment, was um, I really pushed forward really early with the insectomites. Mm -hmm. And a little, that was a little bit risky but I knew if I could, if I got good with my rolls, I could 
um, swing the battle in my favor early and then just try to hold on to that, mm -hmm. hold on to that lead. Um, originally, I was thinking I'd use more of my grave ghouls, um, but they ended up, ended, my, yeah, originally my insectomites were supposed to be like my backup squad. Right. And yeah. then my grave ghouls and my batadactyls were supposed to be like my A-team. Um, but then because that opportunity presented itself and I knew you were going to have initiative next round, I was like, I need to destroy as many cigarettes as I can and right. just throw, <laughs> throw my insectomites in there and see what I can do before you just like stomp on my front line. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and then the crystal sword, we never, crystal sword never really played, but that's because I equipped it on a grave ghoul and then I just ended up letting that grave ghoul take a back seat. Mm -hmm. Um, but the other thing I noticed in this play test or this this playthrough was that, um, like it has in a lot of our latest play tests, um, wounds came out. I think yep. just just the right amount. Yeah, I like, think so. It like yeah, we were constantly sticking things. We were healing a few times. Um, at least it was changing how I was looking at your your guys and like like when I went at this Sigaroth, I specifically went at that one because I knew it was wounded in my. My uh, little dude there was so wounded that I had to go for it. Which, oh, he actually made it to the end of the battle. That's surprising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Any any other any other thoughts or? Uh, not really. I mean, yeah, we did see a lot of wounds. I feel like we saw this double wound side several times during yeah. the match. I mean, there's only one. Yeah, there's only one on the entire die, and I feel like we <laughs> kept seeing that over and over again on both sides. Um, so yeah, we just had a, a lot of wounds. And, and in fact, it, it did its job over here because he was basically incapacitated. You didn't really That's true, want yeah. to do anything with him. That yeah. unit just became so worthless to me that I just right. kind of ignored <laughs> Batadactyl. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, his entire dice pool would be weakened at that point. No, and I will say too, the other thing is once you went for, once you kind of changed gears and were, was go, you were going for win by commander mm -hmm. and I and then took out my commander once and I was down to one commander it changed my strategy a little I thought I was just gonna like lean on the grave ghouls and see if I could just like last another round or two and pick off Sigaroth and then try to pick off your Ancropora but then yeah when I saw you're going for the commander I realized that like the only unit I have on the board who could really be the commander is that insectomite <laughs> and everyone else has such a weak defense pool that there would yep. just be easy targets to pick off for that victory mm -hmm. so i just kind of realized like i just need to go as aggressive as i can yep. in this last kind of half turn i have to try to do something before with it with this dude because yeah because these guys couldn't be my commander mm -hmm. or my uh my champion it just wouldn't have i don't think it would have been too that would have been too risky for sure because that would have been an easy way to just snipe out a victory, right? Yeah, <laughs> from the from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and I, I think I guess the the nice thing too is, did it feel like you still had a path to victory? Well, yeah, through that, uh, it was definitely overwhelming when I was down to two, and you were basically <laughs> fully, <laughs> you know, uh, not damaged yet. But uh, yeah, once I had that route to like hit your champion, I was like, all right, still got this. I just need to survive, and uh, well, I just didn't roll well. But <laughs> well, and you're like those cigarettes are so scary because you can even just see that sure. that one cigarette took out these two units, one of them being a fully healthy insectomite. But you spent a lot of gems, but still, it's like a fully healthy insectomite. Mm -hmm. And then it took out, yeah, my my fully healthy commander batadactyl mm -hmm. um, with one cigarette. Yeah, and that's what I was afraid when they were all kind of in that zone. I was like, if they both get, if they all get double moves, like they could each take out two units, and then that would just be detrimental. Oh yeah. I think that's really it. Any any last thoughts or anything you want to say, Kenny? Uh, no, I'm just uh, looking forward to making this you know expansion a reality. <laughs> yeah, I know. Even like even like I said, these are all prototype pieces that you're seeing on the board. Mm -hmm. The prototype pieces are fun to play with, but it's going to be really fun to play with the actual kind of plastic swords and especially the little artifact pieces, oh, yeah. and then having the final printed player boards and the the different soul cards and stuff is going to be really cool to see. Um, so. Check out the Kickstarter page, and then of course, if you have any questions, if you're seeing the Kickstarter page right now, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for checking out Necromolds, watching this full playthrough of Call to Arms, and I hope to see you in our Kickstarter campaign. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.